You're listening to Slap Radio. What's good, HI? I'm your host, James Westward. We got co host Shika Sheik. And you're tuning to Slap Radio, and that's Slap with Two P's, the sight and sound of the Pacific. And join us in the studio today. We have the townie artist, Tommy Height. Yes. Yes. Hello. Thank you so much for letting us come here, set up, and <laughs> do everything. I know it. You're yeah. probably like, oh, this is a lot. <laughs> There's no, a lot it's that cool. goes into it. It's really yeah, cool. we really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell us, man, how'd you get started? How did I get started? It's a long story. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I was always a creative from, like, I don't know, maybe as long as I have been able to move my hands. I've been, like, taking things apart and reconstructing them and trying to figure out how they do work. Sorry, I don't know if this mic's, like, cutting out. Yeah, no, you're good, you're good. But I, I think like a hard um, start would be when I was 11, I started to draw. I started to, like I decided to be an artist at that age. And I was just hanging out at the park. I was watching people like draw graffiti and sketchbooks. And I got into like street art. Um, but it was really when I got into UH, I got into the, like the bachelor's of fine arts program that I started to be, uh, like curate this identity, um, create this narrative of what I'm doing. And yeah. And that's kind of what people know me now as, as, uh, not graffiti artist, but just actual painter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So graffiti artist, you, you used to do graffiti. Yeah. I mean, just like any other teenager growing up. Yeah. Okay, and how, how'd you find your way into graffiti? Um, it was just, it was, it was ubiquitous. It was all around me. Everyone was, like, that, we're talking about, like, early 2000s. Like, mm-hmm. That was kind of also, even if you look back, like, just 20 years ago, like, art mm-hmm. history, mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of, like, the boom of street art becoming kind of, like, fine art. Um, I know that, like, L.A. was, like, really jumping onto that LA galleries like for example David Cho right like he was mm-hmm. he did his Facebook thing and then all of a sudden he was just I mean that was more of like an investment right mm-hmm. but yeah like it was it was ever ever surrounding like I'm I'm immersed in like golden era of hip-hop 90s right like mm-hmm. I'm I was born in the 90s and I'm like coming into the 2000s coming up growing up hip-hop music street art mm-hmm. that's just what like if I were living in Europe where painting was um, like, say, like the 1500s, like mm-hmm. Dutch golden era painting, you know, you start early, you, you get into a trade school, you, you don't get into it later. You just like, like that's you decide what you want to do like early in life. And that's kind of like what I did. I was like, as soon as I wanted to start drawing, um, I, I knew I wanted to be an artist and so I, w- I had this kind of like reputation throughout high school. It's like, oh yeah, th- that's the guy who draws. And then I had this idea. Uh, I knew that I was going to go to college. Um, my grandma, she set aside a fund for me and my brother go- to go to college. So mm-hmm. it was always it was a it was a blessing to be able to know that I'm going to get a a higher level of education guaranteed if I could get into a university. Mm-hmm. And then I did. I had like issues in school, um, just like anyone else. But it's transitions, right? Like going in school and like being surrounded by so many different people. So you're yeah. going through like finding yourself during that time. Yeah. Was anybody in your family um, artists or you were influenced by? Um, definitely, definitely my mom. And mm. later come to find out my auntie was uh, like she did end up moving to New York. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's like a whole nother recent story, too. I'm about to move to New York. <laughs> yeah, yo. And she's she's been like my family connection out there. Oh, she must be very supportive too. Oh, like, she's oh, yeah. She's like waiting for us to be out there for like nice. years. Yeah. She probably so. help you connect to other artists there as well, or like think is she still doing art? Or I mean, I guess everybody's doing art all the time, right? So. Yeah, um, she's still an incredible drawer. Um, she's not doing, she's not like practicing at all. Mm-hmm. Like not for not for years. Mm-hmm. But uh, she she gives like really good insight and. You know, there, there is that whole generation that she grew up in throughout the 80s, like in New York, mm-hmm. that she does still like eclipse like 
artist, like for instance, um, well, unfortunately he just passed away, but um, what was his name? I'm so sorry, I'm blanking. Uh, Ashley Bickerton. She actually went to high school with Ashley, mm-hmm. and he's not like a, he's not like your super popular celebrity artist that is super well known. But Ashley Bickerton was a huge figure in like the 1980s, like New York art scene. Mm-hmm. He came up with like Jeff Koons, and he came up with uh, like he also personally knew like Damien Hirst. Um, but Ashley Bickerton, a lot of people don't know, uh, grew up a little bit in Hawaii. He went to he went to Kalani, and a lot of his work revolves around this sort of um, hyper fantasy of like tropical climate, tropical environments. He, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't off the top of my head remember his entire biography, but I know he did go to Kalani and he knew my auntie, and it was like we were. She was trying to connect me with him for years, mm-hmm. but then he unfortunately passed away. He was dealing with this uh, this condition that took his life. Um, within the past couple of years. Mm. That was really, that was really sad, but I think he was a really happy-go-lucky guy and like the way he did go out, like he knew it was coming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but It's kind of scary when that happens. Yeah, <laughs> You're like, but yeah. He, was, he was like, he was made. Like he, he had it, he's got this amazing house studio in Bali mm-hmm. and he's got this really cute new family, which is unfortunate because he just had a child. I think he had like one or two recently. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, now he's yeah. departed this world, mm-hmm. but he was really, that, and that's, I feel the way he would say it. Like I'm about to depart this world. Mm-hmm. But he's, he's also been a huge it's influence. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes and no. But, eerie, but beautiful, you know, it's like, yeah. okay. Yeah, but he's been, a, he's been a huge recent influence in my work as well. Uh, utilizing like multimedia, different, like elevating oil painting, to more structural, like, uh, not structural, but like sculptural, mm. sculptural pieces. So in this new body of work that I've, I'm about to have a show uh, mm-hmm. this coming Friday, um, there's a lot of, like, I don't know. I, don't, it, I, I call them relics because they're, it's like multimedia sort of um, pieces that relate to the work uh, visually now attached, physically attached to the, the painting itself. So mm-hmm. in that respect, it is like, it's like a first, secondhand relic. Mm-hmm. Things that are, that are framing the, the paintings or things that are like, you know, you see it painted and then now you see it like physically attached to the painting. Mm-hmm. And he was doing, he did a lot of stuff like that. Um, but again, he had like probably like a factory of like, it's, it's really hard to get to do purely that like his his work was just insane like it was <laughs> it was like it was all just sculptural mm-hmm. like you need yeah you need like a factory <laughs> to produce like, mm-hmm. to execute mm-hmm. work like that but yeah so uh just kind of p- picking up where we left off you were you were talking about uh you got into school you were you're doing school yes okay so walk us through that um uh, you know when you actually started studying art yeah um I've always been a, a fan of history, and I think that is that shows in the work. I have a lot of uh, nods to classical paintings, whether it be the frame or I did do a show that was um, literally takes on uh, classical portraits, and that was one of the last solos that I did. Um, but getting into art educationally um like getting to to the bachelor's of fine arts program you have to kind of zero in on a on a narrative on this like they you have a teacher coaching you it's like you're you're going through this course this like intensive program which is amazing it was something that i'd like it's it was this world of art that i knew that was the direction that i wanted to go and then now i'm learning how to how to get into that and it was it was a it was awesome. It was a blessing to be able to be a part of that program, and you learn, you you always know that it's not like if you want to get into this what is defined as fine art world, mm-hmm. you're not. It's not what you think. People always say it's not what you think, and it it really isn't. It's it. You do find that you 
might stray away from the essence of what drives you to create, mm -hmm. but that's just kind of the reality of life um, to begin with. I mean, anything you do, it's never what you think. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of like connecting like we are doing now. It's a lot of networking. It's a lot of like, you know, what do you, are you considering how much like, like pro, like what do you, what are you trying to do with your work? And you don't want to, you don't want to stray too far away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From like, a, like your original intent. And so I learned a lot of that. Like I took this course called like professional practices where they make you um, like get business cards. Like I'm talking about like someone who has like, I had no concept of like fine art at all. Like I just knew like, oh yeah, like there are artists who make a bunch of money. Like they're very successful, mm -hmm. like monetarily. Mm -hmm. And then there's also artists that are just really good. And unfortunately, they had a really hard life. And I knew that mm -hmm. I don't want to have <laughs> a hard life as right. much as I can help it. Yeah. So let's, let's do this, right? Um, yeah, so going back to getting into the BFA program, I, um, you, you want to have like this sort of identity, this like what, what are you trying to do? You're boiling it down to the essence of who you are, why you're creating. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like, it was the first step that I ever took towards that, that direction. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I just started to, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. No, I mean, I kind of grasped that concept, digested it. And then I realized like, yeah, like I grew up on Oahu, like, and I'm, I was a townie. Like I didn't, I didn't like to go to the beach. Like I liked to, like we skated, we, mm. we defaced property. You know, like yeah. we, we see this crazy homeless situation. We, mm -hmm. we don't like, I had little interest in like the beauty of like the, the beach or the stuff. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not like, I, I can't say that I like everyone struggles, but mm -hmm. like, I didn't, I didn't grow up in like this harsh environment. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not trying to like, like spit that narrative at all. Right. But, uh, if anything, I'm just kind of like, uh, f not fantasizing but like poetically displaying what I what I admire about what uh, would otherwise be viewed as just like ugly mm -hmm. you know like I love to beautify the ugly or just like let let people understand how I see like mm -hmm. this grimy side of Hawaii right and uh I mean it's not like it, I guess it's grimy but like that's 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 what it is like I, it's fun you know yeah and you know a lot of people have this conception of Hawaii, right? Where it's like, oh, it's paradise, it's beautiful. And a lot of people um, in the last few years, especially after COVID, they've moved here and they're like, I, I just felt like it was my calling and I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to change my lifestyle and I felt like Hawaii is something. And then they move here and they realize like, it's hard, <laughs> you know, it's not easy living here and all of that. But I wanted to ask you about the BFA program. Have they always had that at, for a while? Um, yeah. Cause it's kind of like guiding you into, or preparing you mentally with business cards, like you said, and trying to make sure you know what your goal is. Yeah. Cause in art, it's really hard, right? Like a lot of people are like, they, they downplay your artistry and your passion for it, yeah. whether it's music, uh, painting or videography or anything. How did you get over people trying to tell you you're not going to make it? Or have you ever had anybody judge you for your passion? Um, oh, definitely. I mean, like everyone goes to that. Right. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's just a matter of like being focused, keeping, keeping your eye on the ball and like making the right de uh, decisions. Um, as far as, sorry, is that, that's our background now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like people like racing on the, yeah. <laughs> on the street or something. Well, that, yeah. That's the realness. I didn't know if that was like a sound effect you're like, no, playing no, on. No, 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 no. but, um, going back to your question about the BFA program, it's pretty like if there's an art program in a, in a university, it's pretty standard. So that's good. Uh, there's kind of like two general initial directions you can go as an artist in the education, uh, in higher education. Um, mm -hmm. you could, you can get like a BFA, uh, sorry, you can get a BA, which is a bachelor's, uh, associates, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's no intensive program. There's no accepting. You can just qual um, you can just declare and then qualify and then get your degree. Mm -hmm. Uh, or you can get into the, you can go for a BFA program. So fine art is kind of defined as more of like a self-directed. You're not, you're not necessarily going to be doing a lot of like, 
uh, commission work, though everyone does, you're going to be, you're going to be, uh, like, you're going to have your own identity of what you're doing. And that's not to say that you, you can't get a BA and do that, but the BFA program generally is just a more intensive program, um, a lot more supportive. You have, uh, as far as UH goes, all of the, all of the teachers were like practicing artists mm -hmm. and a couple like did take like sabbaticals and they're, you know, they're traveling and it's, it, it really is inspiring to see that. Um, one of my painting teachers, Deborah, she, during the summer, um, she has an apartment in the Lower East Side of Manhattan and she's, uh, she works with a gallery and it's, it was really cool. The first time that I went out to New York, you know, I met up with her and she actually did a, she did like this random summer. I don't know what you would call it, like a summer school course where she has like a small group of students mm -hmm. that meet up in New York and uh, she just like shows them around and she kind of like makes some connections. So what, when I got into Deborah's class and I was really interested in, in New York, I reached out to her and I was like, hey, like I heard you did this course. I heard you discontinued it, but I'm planning on going out to New York and like this summer, like, what do you, what do you think about like showing me around? And it was really cool because I went out there and she, though she did discontinue the course. Um, she there, was still there for you. She was there for me, but there was also uh, three other UH students. I think one alumni, one BFA, two BFA, or no, no, sorry, MFA, and then me. And then we, she showed us like five openings in one afternoon, which is like insane. Like that's a lot of things going on, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really cool. We were like hopping on the trains. That was like my first introduction into New York City. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so just that in general, like, if I hadn't got into university, got accepted into the BFA program, like, was that kind of driven to do this as a career? Like, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have had that, like, opportunity on the table. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So it, do you do art full time? Um, no, no. Mm. <laughs> Uh, some people, it's funny because like the, the culture of being an artist uh, sometimes is looked down upon if you're not mm -hmm. like a full time, at least like you're working under someone or your main source of income isn't just from art. Mm -hmm. But the way I see it, I'd rather be, especially if I want to be self-directed, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to have like a hindrance on my direction by um, like working. Like I don't want to, I don't want to just do commission work. Right. Because it's just going to distract me from like wor what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to portray. What and then like just kind of you're, you, you end up like selling out, not selling out, but like you're just distracted mm -hmm. for the most part. Yeah, like, art is a very um, not complicated. I guess it's just hard to what's the word I'm looking for. But I understand what you're saying, because even with some um, hairstylists some people don't want to just do commission you know they're just trying to figure out a way to create like a bigger picture where it's just portraits and all that stuff but how do you um balance it all you know living here it's very hard yeah <laughs> it's very hard especially as an artist like yourself but i'm sure you work as well with everything and you know with the news that you told us today how are you finding balance in your day-to-day -day life and also trying to stay focused and stay true to your art at the same time yeah, I mean, it's it's been years in the making. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that from the age of like 19, 20, um, if I want to be an artist, I'm going to need like a solid source, source of income to subsidize like time to create art. Mm -hmm. So everyone knows like getting into the food and beverage industry, like you can, it, you're not just getting paid hourly, you can make tips. So yeah. it's, it's a lucrative uh, work environment. And mm -hmm. I started working in a restaurant when I was 19 and have been uh, ever, I think it was like 20, let's see, I don't know, 10 years ago. I'm about to turn mm -hmm. 29 this year. Damn. And <laughs> yeah, so 10 years ago, I got into the food and beverage industry mm -hmm. and I knew that that was going to be the key for me to not have to, like for me to subsidize my expenses in order to create art. So mm -hmm. work less hours, make more money, and then have more time to, to make art. Um, and I worked towards that goal for, I would say until the past, about four years ago, when I started to really make, you know, I, I knew, I found out that like bartending, like you can make good money bartending, mm -hmm. you know, and I really, and mm -hmm. not only that, you, I, I learned a lot from 
working in the service industry, like how to talk to people. Actually, when I had, when I first got out of college, one of I think the first first or second major I declared was communicology, which is really a really random sounding. It used to be it used to be speech, and then it turned into communicology. And it was this, it was a study of communi- to, yeah they had to make a scientific version <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? it was the study of the study of communication essentially mm-hmm. and it's not communication communication is more like reporting or like it's like the uh, psychology of it right exactly like, it's the mm-hmm. science of it and I started to learn about communicology through um, my first major was business like mm-hmm. anyone else right like what do you want to do I want to start a business right mm-hmm. yeah. so. Uh, I got into communicology and then I started to realize like, oh, I'm working at a restaurant and I'm really learning how to talk to people. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't, because I found it fascinating to learn how to communicate and to talk to people. Like everything, physical, nonverbal, verbal, Mm -hmm. like. Body language, all of that. And just giving your energy and trying to get them to respond to you. It's kind of like doing a podcast when you're talking and just trying to find open-ended questions and trying to get them to be more comfortable. Yeah. Getting over this microphone situation. Yeah. <laughs> Hearing your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're doing well with it, though. Well, I'm, I'm trying my best. Just tell me if I'm, like, I'm very wordy when I speak, so. Mm-hmm. No, you're good, man. Just cut you're me good. off. That's a good thing. Yeah, you're totally good. And I must say that um, as a bartender, man, uh, you're really good. I've actually visited many times, uh, <laughs> and uh, it, the, your drinks are really good, especially this one, man. <laughs> oh, this whole thing? No. <laughs> What's your favorite type of beverage? Is it beer? Is it hard liquor? Um, alcohol consuming beverages like anything, uh, like culinary arts Mm -hmm. and it, it is a sector of culinary arts. It's, um, it's, how do you feel like, how are you feeling today? It's hot. Like, I don't, I don't want to drink a hot toddy. I don't want to drink a hot Irish coffee. It really depends. Like, I don't, I don't like to eat pizza every day though. I do like pizza. Mm Yeah. It's always different, ever changing. Um, Mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, short answer, I, I do like to drink tequila because it doesn't yes. make me sleepy. And if you drink the right tequila, that's um, pure agave. At least a pure agave tequila. You're not going to be crossing it with grain spirit. Um, mm-hmm. and, I love uh, reposado. Yeah. I love reposado. <laughs> it's smooth. Anejo, sometimes, depending on which one it is, I get. I notice I get a little too irritable. Really? <laughs> sometimes. I mean... For sure, Casamigos, if I have, like, three shots of the Anejo, yeah. I don't know why. I just get irritable, and I'm like, okay, I need to. It's probably psychological. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, I just, something that I noticed, and I was like, I think I'm going to just stick to Reposado, but I, I do love a good Reposado or Cognac. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> cognac? Yeah. yeah. Should be going in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, okay, so I, I, I wanted to kind of bring us back to, mm-hmm. like, you know, okay, so after college, yeah. Right. Uh, obviously, you, you graduated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Congratulations on that one for sure. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and moving forward, what was your next move? Um, let's see. So I think the re- like we got into the bar topic because of like subsidizing. Like, how do you how do you stay focused on what you right. want to do? Yeah. Right, right, right. And Balancing. then I was I was able to get into manifest. Manifest was like um, has been a blessing like the entire time I've been there for. Almost seven years this year. I think if I had st- like so, people fall in love there, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people nice. fall in love at Manifest. There's actually someone was wearing a, a shirt that said like, "I found my wife at Manifest." Or something. No, yeah. literally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> literally. The first person to tell me about Manifest was he found his wife there, and they were, I don't know if they were engaged at the time, but I ended up going to their wedding. It was really mm-hmm. cool, but he was uh, I was busing with him at Longies. I don't know if you guys remember Longies. I do remember Longies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, talking about the, the restaurant industry, um, I was busing there for a year and a half. Um, I was always trying to get back into the bar. I knew that that was my ticket to to be able to produce art without mm-hmm. having to. You, you, there, there. It's not. It's not to say that you can't do commission work and then, but and then like that won't distract you from your direction. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do commission pieces. Like I, I have this piece um, that I'm making, which is like hit like my my patrons. Um, vision is right along like it, it, it's um, what do you call it? it's parallel with with what I do mm-hmm. so it's it's a scene of Chinatown on like a first Friday oh, just like a block a party see that's is that, what I said is that, is that the one that's inside your I studio said. yeah it's like oh. it's four foot I by eight foot and he hasn't seen it yet and okay. it's been like I think almost two years in the making mm-hmm. wow. a lot of drafting he had this whole list of things that he wanted to put in to make and sure it's captured yeah. He, yeah, yeah no I mean he just wanted this like I would consider it an allegory painting, like allegorical, not 
like the allegory of Chinatown, you know, mm-hmm. like this whole this whole scene. And it's really cool working down there because like the art culture and the, mm-hmm. the bar industry are like hand in hand. Right. And like working there, um, I'm working, I started there as a barista, so I would be there at like seven, eight in the morning, mm-hmm. uh, serving up coffee. And I would meet a lot of people from like Nella Media. Yeah, yeah. and that was shout like, out Nella Mini Group. Yeah, it's the homies. It's been uh, really good connecting with people. Just like, for instance, coming right downstairs to get coffee, and then there's mm-hmm. a like Chinatown bar scene was built. Like the current contemporary bar scene was built on um, on galleries doing openings and First Friday. And I don't. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I hear that First Friday is a thing in other cities as well. But as far as I understand, um, what happened was uh, there was there was a good concentration of galleries in uh, Honolulu's historical Chinatown. Um, the galleries would be giving out, you know, complimentary wine and beer. Mm-hmm. And then when the shows were out at like nine ten o'clock, people would just fill up the bars. Mm-hmm. And then Bar hop. all of a sudden there was a, you know, there's a demand for more bars and so more bars started to pop up. Yeah. And then it was like hand in hand. Then the artist lofts and then all this stuff. And I kind of entered the scene um, a little bit late. Uh, maybe right after its peak. And I feel like we're getting a really good peak post COVID. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are thirsty to go out. Yes. Um, we've had a really prosperous, really amazing year uh, since uh, I would say like 2022, I think was mm-hmm. like the beginning of, I think it was the end of last year. No, no, no. It was the end of like 2021. I think the bar, like the clubs were uh, legally allowed to open again. Okay. And it was just like this new heyday. Mm-hmm. And that really helped like uh, stabilize me financially to be able to cur- like be more creative. And like, I've been working on this, on these paintings for years. Most of it has been produced in the past maybe six months, but um, some of these paintings, like, yeah, maybe I started like four years ago and then I just mm-hmm. finished it up. Right. Yeah. Um, and it, again, it's really hand in hand and I would like to sort of, Come to think, I don't I don't pay homage to the bar industry too much, and it's really cool to be able to, like, be commissioned um, to create, like, to pay homage to, to that industry, and that's what I'm doing right now. And this is like again, every single commission that I do, I end up like learning a lot from that, and I'm yeah. pretty I'm pretty particular about my like I don't just take on any project. Like, someone wants a, a portrait of them and with their cat like in their house, like unless I can really see like me doing that, I'm not going to be doing something like that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Well, I must say that with your paintings that I see. Um, He's definitely on the right track with that Chinatown one because that's the first thing that came out of my mouth. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and, and looking at a lot of your work, you, you really emphasize the, the, the street side of it, but you also portray it in a, in a different way too. Um, it's kind of lighthearted, but still streetwise. Like there's this one painting that he has where it's um, a gentleman who's on the who lives on the street. Yeah, and he's actually dancing hula. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's a hula, or or, or actually he's he's um, he, strumming. he's strumming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's the uh, 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 like a hula lady. Yeah. Uh, a beautiful hula lady, but uh, they're in Chinatown. Yeah. Um, oh, I so, see. So so it's like uh, I love the portrayal of mixing the worlds together where it's like um you know contemporary hula with um a person who i actually see on the streets actually mm-hmm. um you live there, strumming you yeah see i see it yeah. yeah so i see it um and he's strumming and, and, and that's just one of many um one of many uh, like descriptions of what you have i mean right in back of you you have um, you, you know, you have the cones, and and I see the cones prevalent in a lot like, of your. I feel like I've paintings. seen that in real life. Yeah, you yeah. Know? <laughs> So you portray it. Uh, you portray the real life of, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, like you say, the, the the everyday life here in Hawaii that we mm-hmm. see the, that that you have going on, which kind of brings us to what you got going on happening um, coming up. You have a show happening. Yes. Yeah. Oh, th- yeah, thanks. Cheers. Yeah, cheers, cheers to, to that. that. Cheers <laughs> to you guys. Thank you for having yeah. me, but also you're here. So yeah. It's kind of like, no, <laughs> you're having us. We're, sure, we're yeah. having you. We're well, having I feel you. like you're having us. Especially within this, like, talking to a micro- microphone, like, listening to, you know, like, this context. Like, I feel like I'm in your world. So mm-hmm. yeah. thank you for having me. I yeah, appreciate it. Of course. You. Uh, no I, doubt. No doubt. But I, pre- like, I really am, yeah. Thank you for, for being here. Yes. All right. So you were talking about. Oh, yeah. Writers. <laughs> creative block. Yeah, creative how do you block. get over yeah. your creative, creative blocks? blocks. Yeah. <laughs> and again, like it, 
like maybe in the future I'm gonna have another severe like creative block situation. One thousand percent. I don't think everything is gonna be perfect all the time. Yeah. But one one way that I that I've recently got around it is um I I'm super ADD, so I'm always like all over the place. But with when you're trying to build an identity as an artist, you want to stick with like a focus, right? Like a narrative, a statement, whatever. What what are you trying to do? What are you trying to get at? Um, and that can be a number of things. But for what I do, I kind of divided it into three segments. Um, and whether it be like meticulously working on something like detailed, like photorealistic or just being very loose with it, or just, um, I don't know. I just have like these, these three kind of directions that I go, mm -hmm. you know, super loose, generally loose, or like very tight, you know, like really. And when I'm doing something really tight, like really detailed oriented, I can literally like watch a movie while I'm painting because I'm just working like a machine. If I'm super loose, I can only ever listen to music. And anything in between, I can listen to like an audio book. Maybe I can glimpse at a movie or something. But my mind, like I can't just not listen to anything because I'm just, uh, it's not it's not a desirable work environment. Even bartending, like one thing that I realized like very early on was, oh wow, I found a place that like not only is really nice to be in, like in a nice environment, but also like I can listen to really, sorry, just burped. <laughs> really really good music while i'm working mm -hmm. and it really sets like the ambiance and it really the mood yeah exactly yeah mm -hmm. it like gets the it gets the energy going and it's really cool uh, so i'm really i'm really blessed to be like bartending and found that as a source of income because mm -hmm. that's at the end of the day like i try not to let that uh distract from what i do what i want to do mm -hmm. because it really could be distracting it's like you're you're a chef like culinary like cocktails are actually it's the first american uh, culinary movement and um like that's how that's how much i got into into the bar industry like learning the history and like reading these amazing books um on what we're doing how we got here in the bartending industry and uh i think a lot of my work in the near future will be will pay homage to more of this like bartending industry because it really it's hand in hand and what i what what I try to do and what you, sh what every artist should be doing is like being true to yourself about what you're doing. And they say, <laughs> they say, I, so this is a art, um, critic that I, I was like obsessed with for, for a while. And then I like, I watched every video on him and he probably like, shout out to Jerry Saltz. He, <laughs> he, uh, probably got <laughs> really irritated if he at all knew that I was like bugging him. But, uh, so he's he's like the the senior art critic of like the New York magazine New Yorker in New York City. Wow. And uh he just has really good things to say about work. He's he's as he uh he's he's a self-proclaimed failed artist that uh found this amazing career in critiquing art. And uh my teacher actually knows of him cuz she works in New York and you know shows and works in New York. Uh, but like he was a huge influence on like figuring out what I'm trying to do, and like he was, in my opinion, he was like a teacher to me. Like he, I, I, mm -hmm. I retained a lot of information from that guy. Um, and yeah, like okay, so a famous quote from him is like, like artists should just be, artists should be open, and like you're you're basically like you're naked on the table. That's what an artist is. I know it sounds really weird, but if you deconstruct and you digest like what that means, it's like, yeah, like if you're like the essence of being an artist, you, you should be, you're, you're being completely open and you're putting your vulnerabilities on the table for the world to see mm -hmm. and judge. And because that's at the end of the day, like you creating art, you, you're, you're like departing this essence of who you are and manifesting it into this physical entity like and that's what your art is they always say like your art is like oh this this piece is like my child this piece is like my child like what what's your favorite piece oh, i can't i can't name my favorite kid you know mm -hmm. not that i have a bunch of kids or anything but <laughs> well pretty soon well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 we'll, we'll see yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh anyway <laughs> anyway i was gonna ask like define in your own words define art but i think you just kind of that <laughs> well i mean it really 
who 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 is to say what art is right. like there are so many different right. definitions of art but uh in my own words art like art is just it's like the i should bring out my notebook i have all these things written down bring the notebook, bring the notebook. Bring the notebook. yeah I, mean, I can get i'll get it in a minute but <laughs> um it's 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 the essence boiled down of what you're trying to do like that's what art is it's just it's the it's the pure essence of anything that's that's the art of it yeah. the art of mm-hmm. painting the art of cooking right you're a chef the art of dance uh singing like it's all art right mm-hmm. if you're not if you're not put like people talk about like surface like all oh, that person just surface like they're not they're not like uh they're not genuine there's no integrity there's no depth to it it's just surface mm-hmm. um art defined in my opinion is just like the essence of what you're doing it's mm-hmm. boiled down it's a reduction it's it's uh it's simplified and it's it's relevant today so it's there is what is art and then what is art what's hot today so um there's a lot of things and a lot of different opinions and there's a lot of different countries and there's a lot of different cultures so mm-hmm. to define what is hot is uh it's subjective mm-hmm. absolutely but art objectively um that i have come to understand is just it it is the the essence of what you're doing, what you're trying to do, and you're you're not being you're not hiding behind anything. You're not like, you're you're just out in the open, and it, it's integrity. It's it's everything. It's it's word, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's your word. What makes you happy about art? Like, what makes you so happy doing it? Whether it's painting, bartending, or anything. Like, what about it makes you so fulfilled? what satisfies you the most well if you're if you're an artist you have to create art that's Mm -hmm. what defines an artist you wake up every morning and you have to create um if you are a contemporary artist Mm -hmm. if you are a a barber you have to cut hair Mm -hmm. and if you're a human being you have to figure out what you have to do Mm -hmm. otherwise you are depressed Humans were made to create, guys. <laughs> Humans were made to do things, yeah. <laughs> and if you, if you, um, if you don't, if you don't have a purpose, you you start to fall out of touch with what you're doing. And so, in essence, being an artist is being a human. And we just define an artist today as someone who creates art, which is a separate thing. Um, but it's it's becoming like a lot more lucrative, a lot more. Uh, open today and age it's not just like the old crusty like oh i made a painting and this is how much it cost and the gallery gets half and now i'm famous right Mm -hmm. and i'm successful uh there are many different ways to to get into the creative scene and to be be an artist and to uh, make statements and to add to culture because at the end of the day being an artist and creating art you're you're i don't know yeah. There's a there's, it's 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 so lucrative. It's like how, but in in the essence, it is like what are you doing? Like the fundamental, uh, the fun, yeah, the fundamentals behind what you're doing. It's like it's just it's a reduction. It's boiled down. Um, yeah. <laughs> I want to ask a question for Mikey. <laughs> he wanted to know um, what's the significance about the cones or things that you like in triangular shapes. Triangular shapes. From what we noticed so far. That's, that's not, that's not triangle. There's a lot it's of triangles. It's a keen eye. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of triangles. It's like, why triangles? Yeah. So uh, two-dimensional art uh, broken down is, I, I think, could be represented by two general directions, maybe three, um, composition, color, and then uh, contemporarily, um, uh, what do you call Like, purpose. Sorry, I'm like looking that way. I know. I was like, wait, way. what's over there? No, I'm just like, I'm, when I look, I'm like just thinking. I'm like, yeah. But uh, concept, right? So color, composition, concept, I guess three C's. Compositionally, a triangle is structurally sound, right? Like the pyramids, whatever. Um, it's two lines connecting is not a composition. Make it three and it's, it's solid. Uh, portraits. I think is one very lucrative definition of of like a 
triangle composition in paintings. Uh, portraits like uh, Dutch golden era portraits is something that I actually did a show on. That was like the second to the last solo that I ever did. Uh, I There are so many different compositions in classical paintings, but I zeroed in on this like just torso to top of the head sort of composition. And in the back of my head, that solidified the triangle uh, for me. And the cone, I realized, was that simplified. And the cone... <laughs> so there's a, per- there's a reason. Yeah. yeah. There's a no, reason. The, cone, the cone is like, it's like, it means so much, but it also doesn't mean a thing like <laughs> at all. But what it what it Amazing. became it, what it became was a, a reason for it, it was a it was a an exercise to um, within the, a triangle composition to get really loose with with painting and with color composition. So I started to I was like my palette in color was really limited prior to the cone. The cone is what loosened me up. So I. I pay homage to the cone. Like <laughs> a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people nice. like might be like, "Oh, I'm so sick of these cones," um, but there's something about it, and I'll continue to paint it until I'm like through with it. Finished, yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I could paint it with like stars and moons, which is like mm. the original. That was the first time I ever painted a cone. Was because I saw it on a fire hydrant, and it looked like Mickey Mouse from Fantasia. Wow. <laughs> so that's how okay. I first started painting the cone. Mm-hmm. And then I just started, and then it just kind of like took off. There was a really cool report. I don't know that everyone's like, oh, what's up with the cone? What's, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I like the cone too. You like the cone? Cool. Like, <laughs> and I keep, you know, there was this uh, social rapport with the mm-hmm. cone. And I started to, I had a, the last actual solo I had was all cones. And it was, it was like 10 paintings. It was at Manifest. And it was probably like the most conceptually forward uh, show. Mm-hmm. The space just needed to be filled for two months. And I was like, I told Brandon, my boss, I was like, yeah, I could produce a show. It's just going to be cones, though. And he's like, cool. And it was called SKU, or Stock Keeping Unit. So SKU. So those of you guys that are like in retail, uh, my SKU wife. Code, barcodes. Right, yeah. Stock Keeping Unit. So I affiliated the cone uh with paintings and paintings I affiliate with uh, luxury commodities. So, um, and that goes to my relationship with my wife. Like she, her, um, her job is in, in luxury retail. And I learned so much about like fashion and like lu- and retail in general from her. Um, and I started to really dive into the, to the world of like, what, what makes people want to buy? Like very openly, I'm like, what makes people want to purchase art? Like, uh, openly meaning like that's a good question to have as an artist yeah you know? like it shouldn't be the driving force of you creating work mm-hmm. in my opinion at, as far as like my direction that i want to go i don't want like it should just be like the that's price of pressure <laughs> the price of a painting has nothing to do with the painting itself mm-hmm. okay. right? nothing at all but it does it does it shouldn't but it does and that that body of work addressed the relationship between the value of a painting and the painting itself. So the whole body of work was 10 paintings. It was 10 cones. And it was, uh, the theme of the show was, or like what was happening with the show was the price of each painting would change every week. So, and it, and it, uh, went from two, I think like $200 to like $2,000. Okay. So every week I had a different price on there and I went on like I went online and did this like random generator number. So it was like super random prices like $1,578 or something. Okay. Or $256. Like super random uh completely arbitrarily generated prices. And it was just to devalue like the perception of of luxury or of uh fine art. So it was to destabilize um, the value of it, the perceived value of it, and really make you think about like what your, what, like the relationship between a value of a, of a painting and what the painting and piece of art actually should be. And uh, yeah, so that was that's the cone, you know. But the reason why I was making the cones <laughs> was I was just I was just really loosening up my my work. I knew that my <laughs> sorry. <laughs> 
No, it happens to all of us now. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I just knew that I had a very limited palette. I was, and that was like by design initially, but then I realized like, you know, I should really open my, my uh, medium and my materials up to everything. Like I shouldn't just even be painting. I should be like sculpting and mm -hmm. like printmaking and doing ceramics and I don't know, like everything. Dr going back to drawing, maybe just drawing with crayons or something. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, oh man, when you have your first one, I'm telling you, art is gonna probably explode for me. So I can't wait. <laughs> So after you have your child and you're going to change dramatically yeah. in so many ways. So <laughs> is that we're, we're breaking that oh, news right now? <laughs> yeah. It's still, it's still early, but I never said anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, know. we, I mean, I did just get married, so we do plan to have kids. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations like, yeah, yeah. on Congratulations. your marriage. Yeah, for sure. And you know, your life is art in itself, you know, and I think that's something that you'll cherish in your later days, your older days. Yeah. Um, I did want to ask you, um, what are some things that you can, let's say your child gets into art, yeah. uh, which is probably 99.9%. <laughs> I'm not going to force anything, but no, but I feel like because, you know, with every generation, you're influenced by whatever's around you. Yeah. Your child's going to be surrounded by all of your art, just like how we are right now, mm -hmm. whether it's your household whether the way you run your household, the music that you surround your child with, mm -hmm. the art that you, um, the art that you uh, surround your child with, um, what are some things that you, for not just your child, but like for other people that are wanting to become artists? Because I feel like, um, if I had to make a prediction, I think your child would be into art and and whatever type of form it is. But what is something that you really want to teach or? give wisdom to what is what are some advice or what is something that you hope that your children or um your audience will partake or take away from you um yeah i mean going back to like children in general um coming up here in hawaii it was really difficult to uh, i mean there isn't much art education here mm -hmm. and that's it's kind of a, a personal mission of my own mm -hmm. is to be able to one day, like if I could make, uh, if I could become like monetarily successful, mm -hmm. um, support in any way, shape or form, whether it just be like a class teaching or maybe I'm not into teaching and just like supporting that financially mm -hmm. or the next step, like a scholarship, which is huge for me. Like I got, I got a scholarship uh, and scholarships are very there's very broad right you can just get like a hundred dollar scholarship you can get a thousand you can get a full ride um and i had a i had a few scholarships that were like really changed my life like i i the first scholarship that i got was just for writing an essay and it really helped it was a thousand dollars and like that was that was books you know what i mean like i was it was just the one step forward towards like my dream of what i want to do so uh i I really want to, I would really like to um, solidify art as a staple form of education in Hawaii. I think it's very crucial because it's very mm -hmm. underappreciated. Um, as far as like I, I <coughs> grew up, it, it's like, a, I mean, I can't say that we didn't have like a decent art program, but mm -hmm. it definitely wasn't taken seriously. Like it's, it's right. A, I think art is always never taken seriously yeah. in any type of form and it was, it was really cool seeing sorry i didn't mean no no, no go for it. like on it on that train of thought like it was really cool to understand that art and science in the uh are in the same uh school and what i realized is that like art is the science of every like it's the the fundamentals it's it's the science of, of anything really <laughs> yeah but whatever you do like whether you're tying your shoes or you're making a painting like the art of tying shoes like that's art the art of that the fact that that's like a saying um it's it, there's science to it mm -hmm. and uh i think it's for me it's it's important to emphasize and to um just promote that that concept mm -hmm. that art is it's really important and it used to be it used to be taught as a formal uh practice of education like mm -hmm. you could and again like going back to like if i had grown up in an era where you have to decide what you want to do at an early age 
uh, like for instance. That sucks, by the way. I yeah no. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks. For me, it would have worked because I always always thinking about what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And again, like at age of eleven, I was like, I want to be an artist. I don't know how, what direction that's going to be, but you know, my parents were very supportive my entire life, and I really, I wouldn't be the person that I am without them. And it's salute to our parents. Absolutely. Ah! Still together, uh, their entire marriage, it's been awesome. Right, and that's hard because a lot of people blame their parents for their struggles or their issues. Yeah. But they fail to appreciate them for what they could provide. Yeah. Growing up, you know? Yeah. Um, With your show coming up, what was the question that we had earlier? (laughs) 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 With your show coming up, tell us us about your show. We definitely want to know more about it. (laughs) <laughs> no, we, yeah, we, we, we we're going back to that. We, we're going back to the we're yeah. going back to what your show is happening and is what this, it's about and, yeah. and where it's at. Yeah. yeah. Is this your last show before you move to New York? Um. Yeah. 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 I'm. I'm. So I have. I'm having my show this Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kyle Space. Uh, right next door to Sig Zane, Sig on Smith. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, amazing space. They usually do short duration shows, a week max, maybe even just openings. Um, I'm super happy to have a two week show. Nice. There's not going to be a lot of uh, gallery hours. I think I might, I'm going to figure that out. I know it's like, oh, it's in a week, but I haven't figured it out all <laughs> out yet. Solidified a name like last week. It's going to be called, uh, wow, look at that. Yeah. And that just kind of roots from uh, what I do paint. I, I, I went through so many different iterations of names and I don't want it to be too serious because the work, uh, though it may seem serious, is really... What is this, a moth? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I'd say, I think it's a termite. It's a ble- Oh, yeah. I was about to say, if it's a moth, it's a blessing. A yeah. termite, we just smash them. <laughs> there isn't even smash like... It. <laughs> smash it around, yeah. You know, it's hot. It's yeah. hot in Hawaii, guys. Yeah. It's hot. It is. 84 well, degrees, yeah. 57% humidity. Yeah. This is in the red zone right now. Yeah. But Back to your show. Back um, to your show. Yeah. No, I mean, so the show is, uh, it's called, oh, uh, wow, look at that. And it's kind of like a play on like, well, I mean, just cool art to see. You'd be like, oh, wow, look at that, you know. But for me, uh, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to emphasize like what I feel when I see these very normal scenes and objects. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are things that are going to be in there. That's like I think there's a couple sunsets. I have a couple new directions like sky pieces that you've seen that's like behind me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Really just. I mean, there's there there is. I just got it. Okay, sorry. Yeah, no, there's energy behind everything that you do, right? It's all communication, right? Yeah. There's a lot of energy behind it. Some is calm, some's intense, some's what like what the hell is going on here, right? Mm-hmm. Exciting, but at the end of the day, um, every piece that's going to be going into that show uh, has has a has a direct link to that concept of like, oh wow, look at that, like look at that, like what's going on over there. Amazing. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even know. Super, like, I want it to be super vague, but just vague enough to, to make people think. And it's not, it's not too, like, out of touch. It's not, like, it's definitely not abstract, but, like, conceptually abstract for sure. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. We can't wait. We'll be there. Yeah. Last cool. question for me. Yeah. From me. Sorry, I have a lot of questions. Why is art important? Why is art important to why is our, i feel like we touched on that but yeah yeah kind of i mean yeah. if you i just feel like just because a lot of people are going to be watching this and some people i feel like they have the what oh it's okay rewind that it was real <laughs> <laughs> some people yeah um don't think art is important you know and i feel like there's art in everything like you said but why is art important to you yeah, I, I'm going to give a two-part answer. And mm-hmm. it's it's so cool that you said some people don't think art is important. They think and it's like wasteful. It's just like a waste of time. And I'm like, art is a form of expression, whether it's from a depressive state or a happy form. Yeah. Well, why, is imp- why is art important to you? I think art, um, people who think that art isn't important um, see it as this pretentious, they see the pretentious side of it. And everything has a pretentious side to it. Mm-hmm. Everything is multifaceted. Uh, art is very faceted. Um, why is art important? It is, again, it's, it just how, it depends on how you define art. And again, it goes back to, I define art as it being like the, 
it's the bare essence. It's the, it's no frills. It's just, it is what it is. Like what, like what makes up this cardboard box? What makes up this painting? Like today in time, we've, we've boiled down like what art is. And it's not just painting. It's not just sculpture. It has, it has this facade of being like, oh, you have to be like this craftsman, this artesian, this person who like has like studied drawing, painting, or sculpture. Um, but no, that was just like the intro into humans figuring out like what art is. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's so lucrative. It, it can be anything, really. It's, and again, it's not, it's not far from, art, art is just the, it's the quintessential essence of something, of what, what you're doing, of what, what it is. Like um, people, who, people who do coding, they're, they're mm-hmm. artists. People who speak, who anything who anybody who's like just getting down to like the bare essence of it mm-hmm. um, that's art that they're an artist but and why is that important i think i don't i don't need to explain it after that like it's it is what it is like it gives you purpose yeah it gives you mm-hmm. purpose it's a form of expression too mm-hmm. it's a yeah it's a it, there's a lot of very expressive art of course mm-hmm. but as far as people not as far as people saying like art is not important um I think that they have a uh, kind of skewed um, understanding of what art should be understood to be, mm-hmm. uh, which is very worried, worried to say. But Some good beer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's rum, actually. Yeah. Oh, shit. It's a mix. Sorry. It's I should have told you. Yeah, yeah, I should have. did add. not warn me about that. Yeah, but yeah it's th- a mixed th- drink. This feels really yeah. good. Kuliana yeah. rum. Yeah. Kuliana, yeah. Kuliana rum. Shout out. Shout out. Big Island. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, What's up? I have so many things because art is so um, unlimited. Yeah. But yeah. Westbrook. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, you, you, you basically you, you hit it on the head on many aspects, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I said, your art intertwines what's going on in your mind, what you've seen. You filter it all the way through. And this is what we see, the result of what we see. You know what I'm saying? Um, as far as like the oil painting, you know, what I mean, the, the strokes, the, the 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 design, the the thoughtfulness that you that you have, you know, you construed. Um, the painting in back of us is on top of a Ross or a Ross painting. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, then, like a Ross print. Yeah, a Ross background. print. So yeah. it's and, from Ross. Yeah. Uh, I think originally it was. Yeah, I think okay. it had like the Ross stick sticker. Do on you it. know how hard it how hard it is to color correct? <laughs> well, well, I understand. So, so that's <laughs> yeah, why he true. he created a border around it so that it's it's had a big piece like that. So what what I'm what I'm saying is that, you know, I understand like what you're saying as far, as far as an artist and expressing and, and doing what you got to do with the with with intertwining what you grew up with and and going to school and then also going to fine arts and then intertwining that and then funneling it into a way where you are now expressing your own identity through the cones and everything else that you got going on so i I really appreciate all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. you know what i mean because you know what i mean like when i see art and when i hear music and all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. i i i get excited about that kind of stuff just because i understand the fact that you know Nobody sees you when you're behind closed doors or yeah. you're painting and you're doing your own thing. Those are hours and hours and hours they and years. They see the final result. They see the like, final result. They think it's so easy, but it's not. It's not. So you see the final result, um, but, you, but people don't understand the, the, the uh, you know, not I, I won't say anybody, but, you know, you, you just, you, you understand. And that's what's most important about it, um, Tommy. Yeah. So, you know, I commend you. For for, yeah. for your your efforts and all that kind of stuff, and what I want to do is ask you, what is your? You have the the show coming up. You mm-hmm. have the show mm-hmm. that's happening. What is your goal? Oh, the goal for the show? No, the goal in your general. Your goal in general. Yeah. Oh. Um. Well, I mean, it kind of goes back to what I was saying about being an artist. Like, at the end of the day, it's like you you have to do it. Like. <laughs> Here's a here's a short short answer to that. Yeah. Like if I don't if I don't like create art yeah. like in a in a couple of weeks, like I get really irritable. Because that's it's something that like I need to do. It's it's mm-hmm. it's a way to, for me to release my energy. Yeah. And I'm a very energetic person. Like mm-hmm. um my day job is super labor intensive, like and I've been doing it for years and Are you I still a bartender? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm actually only there on the weekend. I've got it <laughs> I've gotten it down to where I just have to be there 
uh, during the weekend to make ends meet. And then Sorry, any- tip your bartenders because it's hard. Yeah, it's not, a, it's, <laughs> it's, not a, hard. it's not a public service. It's <laughs> but um, we're there to make you feel good. Right. <laughs> well, we're there. We're there to create this ambiance for you to leave your house and like have a good time. Mm-hmm. And if people, if if bartenders weren't tipped, it would be a very boring environment. Mm-hmm. Trust me. Like, really. But again, like I understand, like things are expensive. Times are hard. Like it's mm-hmm. not easy. I get it. As long as you're not, you don't have this like bad intention behind you. Like oh, like you're just trying to spread negativity. Mm-hmm. Even even if someone isn't tipping, like or tipping well, like their positive energy really makes me like love them to be in the space like, oh it's a form of tipping yeah absolutely yeah because yeah. again like people are leaving their house to be somewhere else to mm-hmm. be in an and and come to think actually that kind of go along it's it's right align it aligns with uh with art like it's like especially my art what i try to produce is a, a form of like escapism right like you're mm-hmm. like it, it's i'm escaping reality to create this piece and then i i hope that that energy can be perpetuated into the viewer and like they can escape reality into this world. Mm -hmm. And like, we haven't even touched the, like the surface of defining a painting, you know, and that's a (laughs) totally different, that's a totally different conversation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll get into that. Like what defines a painting? (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to have to bring my notebook out for that one. But um, yeah, like, like art in general, it, it really is escapism, especially these days. Like it's it's tough. It's not easy, and we're, it's not. we're living in one of the most beautiful places on earth right now, right. and it still could get tough, you know. <coughs> so your goal for it is to just having a, a, a an opportunity to escape. Oh yeah, I'm so sorry. We strayed very far away from the root. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like, so again, I was I was saying that like my my goal is just to release energy, right? But my, I would say like my mission is to, again, like to, you have to have a mission. You have to, I think it's very important to give back. And if I could in any way, shape or form, like make something of myself, you know, again, I told you that I'm leaving, I'm moving in uh, late July yeah. to New York city. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always had an attraction in that city. I've always has, had an attraction to like urban environments in general. Yeah. Like originally it was San Francisco, but mm-hmm. rooted back to New York. Um, to just like uh sorry like lost my train of thought but just explore like my interest in in a city and like in this lifestyle like because i i'm I'm not even touching the surface of what i'm trying to do here you know but at the end of the day um a a strong goal for moving out there is to to find a, a master's program to to do and then to see where that takes me or maybe just like an artist in residency program. There's a lot of opportunities out there, especially just for a painter or like an artist in general. But I do plan to move back uh, eventually and then to mm-hmm. just build on this foundation of uh, like art and culture in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's my that's my mission. Yeah, that's where you see yourself in like 10, 15 years. Hopefully, I mean, it'd be cool to, <laughs> it'd be cool to get it done that quick. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What advice would you have for up and coming artists? Artist, yeah. Oh, so much advice. Like I love doing um I love doing talks to to classes. I did a couple mm-hmm. during COVID and we did like virtually. Because um, mental health is so important and a lot of people get pressured from, you know, making money and trying to survive. Yeah. Like what are some things that you can give to artists that love being an artist yeah. but trying to survive at the same time because that's so important. Yeah. Um I mean there's so much again, there's so much stuff I could there's so much knowledge I can pass down, but I, mm-hmm. I would think, I would say like some of the greatest pieces of advice that were given to me before, like at, at the earlier ages uh, of my art career, which is still right now, like I'm still very early on, um, is to just keep producing work, like mm-hmm. constantly. Don't ever expect anything, like mm-hmm. ever, like just, and come to a realization that you need to do this, like, mm-hmm. and that's, that's what makes you, you. And if you, if that's not the case, then maybe do something else. But I think creatives know that they're creatives and maybe they're, they become discouraged whether like this, this or that, or like whatever's going on in their life. And uh, it's very um, beneficial to jump boat into a different medium. Mm-hmm. And you, you might actually find that like, like for me, one, um, like painting, you know, I got into painting and I'm like, kind of like really, uh, 
dedicated to it, like mm-hmm. oil on canvas. And when I do jump ship, like do other things, like I do find it to be really like um, enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, I did this uh, this printmaking class for a little bit and it was really fun. Like I was like, well, wow, like I'm good at this, you know? And I'm not, I don't know. It, it was just easier. It was, it was easier to do that than painting for me for some reason. But, um, and you know, if that's the case, like, just like, don't suppress something else. But if you are a creative, if you, which is basically the, you're an artist, um, just keep, keep doing stuff, keep working. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just like, oh yeah, I, I like cleaning my bathroom. <laughs> like maybe you can, you could like define the art of cleaning a bathroom, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. One last question for me. I'm sorry. No. I said last question early. If you weren't painting or doing art yeah what would you be doing um this is really what? good beer whatever this is <laughs> if i wasn't if i wasn't painting what would i be doing mm-hmm. oh, i don't know what, what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> he wants he want to keep painting <laughs> yeah, yeah I don't. okay okay another question then no um, i mean that's a good question though um but i think that's uh, good because you're. That just means you're very confident in where you are. I th- yeah. Well, yeah. I think that if I if I wasn't, I would like to. F- I would like to find out if 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 I shouldn't be painting. Like very mm-hmm. like as soon as I can. Like so I can start doing what I what I should be doing. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty I'm pretty content on what I'm doing, and I mm-hmm. um I really am. I want to keep open to doing something else. Like absolutely. I'm I'm actually really excited to figure out what next. Like what's mm-hmm. next. Like when when. When am I when am I gonna get over painting cones? You know, when am I gonna get over <laughs> painting in general? When when will I be able to create something else that's not a painting? Mm-hmm. Um, but I do like to I like the idea of like sticking to one thing and being consistent because like my mind is all over the place. I'm super ADD, super ADHD. I think um, that's every artist. Yeah, they're trying to always uh-huh. satisfy whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else? Yeah. <laughs> a- 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 sure. Anything else you want to add? Uh, I mean, I told you in the beginning, like, stop me before I'd talk too much, but there's a lot of things I can talk about, but, um, no, I mean, uh, come check out a fun show Friday. Um, also just try to be as real as you can. Don't, I don't know, don't, don't think you need to be doing one thing if that's not how it, if it's not feeling right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in essence, I don't know. How can we follow you? Yep. Um, you can look up my name on Instagram, <laughs> but also my, my hashtag is magic staff, which is a, uh, it's a nickname from growing up. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a long story. We didn't even get into that. You uh, can say it now. We kind of did. Magic staff. Yeah. <laughs> well, go ahead. It's funny because like, uh, there are these like grandfathered names and that's kind of why I didn't change my handle because <laughs> I started Instagram like maybe a year or two after it first started. And that was like, my first name on instagram it was like you know it's like the street nickname you know it's just what Mm -hmm. people call you um and i just never changed it because um i could never change it back but maybe i should just let go i don't know (laughs) yeah so what yeah you were (coughs) you had a staff and you were skateboarding with it um yeah no i yeah i would just hang out um on the street i'd hang out in dishes like we'd just be doing crazy you know whatever kid things like normal city kid things, yeah. and uh, I just like pulled the branch off a uh, a fallen tree in a ditch, and I would just like walk around with it because uh, I thought it was cool. I don't know. <laughs> and I'd like yeah, like paddleboard style skateboard. Like I didn't think it was weird. Like I think people were just like, oh, that's fucking rad. Like yeah. And then people just started calling me Magic Staff. So and then I just started writing it everywhere, and that was kind of like that was like my name. You know, like. If you hang out at parks or on the street, like yeah, people, that was your signature. Everyone got nicknames, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't even know your first name for a while. I just knew you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was like, "Oh, James." I was like, "And that's a pretty epic last name, by the way." <laughs> yeah. Westbrook. No Russell. Westbrook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no Russell James. Um, you know, I we really wish you the best and everything. I know you're moving yep. to New York, and you're starting a new life. We wish you so. We wish you all the best, especially with mm-hmm. your, um, oncoming your your newborn that's coming thank you um congratulations and you know from a mother's standpoint Mm -hmm. you don't understand what's about to come oh no yeah if you have a girl i'm telling you you're gonna be like the the biggest softie you ever thought you know oh she's gonna be so spoiled (laughs) (laughs) but i'm telling you it's just a crazy 
experience to have kids because yeah. it's a mirror. And sometimes you look at yourself and you're just, you're in denial, but your art is going to explode. Yeah. Um, I agree. You're going to give your kid a paintbrush, whatever it is, oil pastels. Um, you're, I wish you so much abundance of blessings and um, good health. Thank and you. I'm telling you, the experience is going to be so different from where you are now. You're going to look back like five, maybe even 10 years and be like, damn, my life is so different. Yeah. And life is going to be a different. Um, the definition of life is going to be different. Your art, the definition of art is going to be different. Yeah. And I hope and I know that everything is going to be um, better. Yeah. And life in um, general is going to be, um, let's just, I don't know, just being a mom, it's so. It's more than you can ever say. Yeah. Yeah. Did your yeah. nail just fall? <laughs> Sorry. It did. Oh, it paused. Sorry. It did. I didn't want to, like, ignore it. It's okay. No. It's, it's okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but okay. I, I think, I think just because um, I'm a mom of two girls, yeah. if you do have girls, they will teach you a different type of patience. No, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I just want a healthy baby. But like, like easy way out would be <laughs> a, a boy. Only because like I, I didn't have a sister or anything, so I don't like know. Are you an only child? No, no, no. I have an older brother. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like for me, it would be, uh, like I would have a lot more wisdom to give to a son. Mm -hmm. But like, um, I, I'm super excited to, like, whatever, like either or, mm -hmm. like. Or if they decide to, you know, change their identity later, like that's, that's cool. Like, mm -hmm. as long as they're happy and healthy is like my only concern. Yeah, yeah. I wish you so much um, blessings because your life is you're moving, you're having a new child. There's just so many turning points, yeah. and I know based off our conversation, you're just gonna stay very um, not stable, but um, you know, you're gonna stay very grounded. Because art is so important to people. To me, um, art is just a form of expression and just being able to stay humble, yeah. being able to stay grounded and just being aware of your surroundings. And everybody grows up very differently. But I do hope that um, everything that you do in the future is going to be more abundance than you think it is. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for coming for the show. Once again, you tune in to Slap Radio. And that's Slap with two Ps, the sight and sound of the Pacific. Pacific, Pacific. I'm your host, James Westbrook. We're a co-host. Sheikha Sheikha. And obviously, we got Tommy Height. Yes. Thank you. Till yes. next time, my friend. Yes. Yeah. Slap radio. Yo.